Praise the Lord for the air treatment system, yeah? Whoo! I'll be honest, I look forward to coming to church because, I mean, a little bit bigger, yeah? So we sweat when we sit down, you know, and hold our AC cherry. But anyways, how's it? My name is Franco, one of the pastors. I'd like to welcome you to our church. Um, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, we pray that you would speak to us today, Lord. Lord, pray, pray that you speak through me, Lord. Maybe your words, not mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're going to take a look at a passage in the Bible, and this is one of my most favorite um, I don't most favorite, my bad, most favorite passages in the Bible. This is my, the best Bible character that I can relate to, okay? So I'm going to share a little bit about my heart, so no judge me, no. So Judges 6, 11 through 16, it says this, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah, see, she was there back then, no, um, that belonged to Joash the Abrazite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. <clears throat> okay, real quick, what's going on? This guy, the Midianites are oppressing the Israelites. And what would happen is that whenever they would harvest something, the Midianites would come in and they would just take anything, you know. And so that's what's going on. And then when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And then Gideon responds, pardon me, my Lord, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Do, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and, abandoned us and given us into the hand of, the, of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? And Gideon says, pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Okay, so Gideon is there. He's threshing wheat. Now, if you all, any of you work in the wheat industry, you know, no, I'm joking, no. But what you're supposed to do with wheat is you're supposed to stand on a hill where there's a lot of wind. And what you do is as you thresh, you throw the wheat in the air so that way the wind would take the pilau part away and the good stuff would drop. Okay, so that's what you're supposed to do. But see, Gideon is a man that lived in fear. So he's actually doing this in a wine press. Now we can think of like the, the current wine press, right? But back in the day in Israel, the wine presses were actually almost like one hole that they dug in about three to five feet below. And so imagine this case. So he's threshing wheat in one hole. How much do you think he can get from that? Not much, right? But see, what he was doing is he operated in fear. So you can even hear him like, you know, you can hear him even say like the, the Lord calls him mighty warrior. Huh? Who, me? No, you don't understand. My family is the smallest of all families. You know, Manasseh was Joseph's son. He was actually, Manasseh was Joseph's oldest son back in the day. This is back, back, back. And when Joseph brought his sons to get blessed by his father, his dad was blind and he actually blessed Manasseh's younger brother. So he and Joseph tried to switch him. But then the dad was like, no, the blessing ought to go on the youngest. So you hear the oppression, right? The, the insecurity from, this is years and years of insecurity. I'm, my family is from Manasseh. We're not the blessed ones. And in fact, I'm the least in my family. So I could relate to this because for me, I'm a little odd. <clears throat> I grew up in a Catholic, I went to a Catholic school growing up, St. Teresa on Oahu. Predominantly Filipinos. Okay, nothing wrong with Filipinos. Love them. Love the food. You know. Um, so me, I was, I was bigger. You know. Why well, you got to laugh, Stacy? No laugh. No. But I was bigger, and my nickname at school was Carabao. <laughs> All the Filipinos are laughing right now. Uh, for everyone else, like myself, who did not know what it meant, it means water buffalo. Now imagine going through school, like, I don't know, nothing. They're like, hey, cut off. I'm like, yo, you know, and I never know, right? So I'm like, yo, oh, yeah, I get one cool Filipino gang name, man. Cut off. What's up? Cut off in the house, you know? 
And then somebody told me what it meant. I'm like, oh, you punks, huh? Okay. So then I grew up in Kalihi. And all my friends was Samoan. Grew up in Oahu. The rule is you always have one Samoan friend. Because you never know. You might need help, right? But see, I was all confused because, again, I was a bigger, right? Okay, 5'4", 190. 5'4", 190, okay, yeah. In fourth grade. Um, <laughs> why are you guys laughing at my pain again? What's up, family? You know. So, right, so I'm all confused. The Filipinos called me caught about. You know what the solace called me? Little man. So I'm like, what am I, fat? Am I skinny? What's going on? And then I went to a Korean church. So I'm half Korean. I'm Korean, Hawaiian, Chinese. I'm half Korean. In the Korean culture, if you're half Korean, you're a lower class. You know, and then I grew up and we didn't have much. And I I said earlier, I grew up in Kalihi, not the best part of the, you know. And so all these insecurities, all these insecurities. And so what started happening is I became held captive by these insecurities. And so when someone asked me to do something, I would say, who, me? No, can You sure you're like somebody else? And see, growing up, uh, we had a Hanai family, and, um, and, you know, I don't know how your parties are, so I'm just describing how my parties were. My family parties, you know, I'm not saying I condone this, but it's just the way it was. We, huge family parties, we would have seven huge white Costco coolers, okay? One cooler was soda, juice, water. One cooler was all Budweiser, one cooler was all Bud Light, one cooler, yeah, and you know, and of course one was all hearts, liquors, and wine. And that's just the, the way the family, you know, everybody had their own drinks, so they just bought everything, I guess. I don't know. But the rule is, if you're under 21, you never reach into a certain cooler. You only get one cooler you can reach from, and that's it. If not, you get discipline. For the locals, you get lickings. You know, so that was the rule. And we all knew the rule. Um, so I remember one time my dad, he would always help my uncle cook. My uncle cooked for the whole party. My dad was there. And then he goes, hey, boy, go grab uncle one beer. Okay. You know, my dad told me to get it, you know. So I go to the cooler and I put my hand in the cooler. Not even a split second later. Hey, who are you? Uh, 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 who are you? Uh, and I never even know the guy that's asking me who I was, you know? And you, if you grew up in Hawaii, this term, who you, is usually followed by some kind of conflict, right? Somebody robbing you, hey, who you? Uh, you know, and then you walk down the wrong street, hey, who you? You go into the wrong, you know, store, hey, who you? And every time there's that question, there's always conflict after. So when this uncle was like, hey, who you? I was like, uh, 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 and I was stuck. You know, and, and that's kind of what happens is like the enemy builds up all these lies in our hearts, in our minds, and all that. And we get conflicted. Who are you? Who are you? And we don't know how to respond. So, how do we respond? We respond to lies that we've listened to. Who are you? i stupid. Who are you? I'm not good enough. Who are you? Ah, I'm nothing. Who are you? Oh, my past is sort of kind. You but want to believe. But see, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some truths on who we are. Is that cool? Okay, number one, who you? Who you? Number one, I am made perfect in his image. I am made perfect in his image. Now, why is this important? Okay, Genesis 127. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God. He created them. Male and female, he created them. Now, you don't need to raise your hand. I'm going to ask this question. Don't raise your hand. Anybody ever felt insecurity of either being too big, too small, too tall, too short, small eyes, overweight, um, too poor, uh, not Korean enough, not Filipino enough, not Samoan enough, not Hawaiian enough? Ever felt that before? Yeah? But see... That's like the seed that the enemy uses to take our mind down a spiral where we begin to believe lies. Oh, I'm not good enough. Yeah, you're not good enough, you know. Oh, for real, yeah, not good enough. 
Oh, I got, in, I got in bad grade. Yeah, you're stupid. That's why. Oh, I'm stupid. That's why. You know, but if we begin to combat those things with truths, oh, you stupid. No, I'm not. I made in his image. You're calling me stupid. You're calling God stupid. You're not good enough. I don't care. I'm not good enough. God, I'm good enough. I made in his image. So you're calling him not good enough. Oh, I cannot do nothing. <laughs> yeah, I can. Because I made in God's image. You know, because here's, here's my thinking, okay? Here's my thinking. If you like me, you're going to talk to yourself anyway. Okay, am I the one who talks to myself? Okay, maybe I am. Anyways, uh, no, you're going to talk to yourself anyway. So why don't you talk to yourself in God's truths than the enemy's lies, right? You know, and just this, I learned this when I was 18 years old. And back then, I was just starting to go to Bible college and we're getting ready for a mission. And the guy I was training us said, you know what? When you go into the mission field, we was going to Philippines, guys. We was going to third world action. You know, they talked about demon possessed, all kind of movie action that happened in this place. So they said, you're going to go to this place and the enemy's going to start telling you lies. So when that happens, you fight them with truth. Huh? What do you mean? You just speak, the, speak from the Bible. I'm like, cuz, I'm from Kalihi, man. I don't even know what the pastor or the preacher would say. I don't know. I don't read the Bible. That's okay. No need to be precise. Just say the truth. Okay? So sure enough, so had this conflict at work. This guy, he just went off at me. He just went off. And I was like, what? And I'm, I just literally walked into the room, and he just started snapping at me. I was like, what? Me, I hate injustice. I'm like, cuz, if I did something to you, bro, yeah, snap at me, but I never do nothing. So I started boiling, boiling up, right? You know, and this person, he wasn't from Hawaii, so brother is just playing in my head, you know. And I'm like, oh, and so I started walking away. I started walking away all angry. Oh, man. And I just, I, and then the guy's teaching popped in my head. And I started walking. And so before, I used to have a very long process of getting over conflict. Like, I can hold a grudge like no other, man. You're talking about like three, four, four, four months kind. I can hold a grudge. Man, I go see you in the store. I'm going to give you stink eye. Even though you can't see my eyes, I can see your eyes, you know, like. And so I was walking, and I, instead of getting mad, I started saying, Lord, you, you're God of peace. Lord, you're the Lord of my life. you got to love, so i got to love this guy, no matter how dumb he is. Lord, you know. And I just started repeating these, like, just, just words and phrases from the Bible that I remember from worship songs, all that kind of stuff. And guys, what usually takes three months to get over it, it took me three minutes to get over it. Because I wasn't filling all my head with all this anger and all these lies. I was speaking the Lord's truth. Because I believe that in order to be able to move forward in freedom, we have to define who we are. And so why not, right? God doesn't make junk. So imagine if we just stopped right there. I stupid. No, I'm not. I smart. Because God made me and he's perfect and I'm perfect in his image. So I smart. Boom. All power. And if that becomes our mantra, God's truth becomes our mantra. No matter who and cut you off on the road. You know that guy, you know what? That's okay, because you know why? He would cut me off because I'm made perfect in God's image. That's why. That's why he would cut me off. So he never cut me off because of me. He would cut me off because of God. Amen. Woo! And you know, at first, you're going you're gonna to feel crazy. You're going to sound crazy. Don't do what I used to do. I used to say them out loud. You know, yeah, people look at you like, huh? You know, just you know, under your breath, you know? So just say that. You know, just say that. You know, Lord, I made in your image. I made in your image. I made in your image. And boom, you start doing that. You start beginning, right? Because when you hear lies, you start believing the lies. When you believe the lies, you speak the lies, right? When you hear the truth, you're going to start believing the truth. And then you start speaking truth. And what happens is we begin to speak life. Okay, number two, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Ephesians 1, 5 through 6. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do. And he gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. God has called you to be sons and daughters of the Most High. That's some heavy stuff. And that's one truth. God has called all of us to be sons and daughters of the Most High. Okay, take it back to that when I was 12 years old, reaching to the cooler, right? 
So I go, I reach the cooler. The guy's like, who are you? Uh, 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 uh. I'm Danny's boy. My dad's name is Danny. If you didn't make that, you know. I go, oh, Danny's boy? Oh, you Danny's boy? Yeah? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, sorry, Uncle. This is for Uncle Neil. He stayed with Dad, so I got to go give him that. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, all good, bro. All good. You good, bro. Oh, I'm so sorry, you know, because I'm so insecure. No, no, I'm sorry, Uncle. No, but you good. Okay. Uh, should I put it back? No, no, no. Give it to your father. No, you got to give it to your father. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. You know, and I was like, oh, wow, yeah. What's up? My daddy's boy. What's up, cuz? You know, I never said it because, you know, I was so, and I like your lickings, right? <clears throat> but see, the enemy going to come and try mess up your life. When he comes and he's like, who are you? Huh? I want a child of God. Who are you? God my father what? My father lick you. <laughs> and that's what you got to say, people. Like, for real kind. Because you got to understand the power of the name of your father, man. Who are you? I'm a child of God. What's up? I'm a child of God. You know, when I was 12, Dan is boy. It never really makes sense. Until like I went to um, Big Island two weeks ago, we went there, and then I got to stay with my cousin. So my family is weird. You know, my dad is the youngest of 13, and I'm the youngest cousin. Like, I get first cousins 50, 60 years old. The kind of like they already collected retirement, and I, you know, I'm like, what? So I'm staying at my cousin's house. She's my father's goddaughter, so we're super close. We've always been close. She's a, uh, I'm not going to say her age because it's on YouTube, so she's older than I am. And so I would ask her questions because... My dad would never tell me stuff about him and mom. And so she was like, oh, cuz, you know your father, bro. He was gangsta, bro. I go, what? Yeah, man. And he started telling me stories. And I'm like, and then brought me back to the story because I was prepping for this message. I was like, I think that guy was scared of my, scared of my father because I think he would have licked the guy. You know, sorry, my bad, sorry. But see, you know, the enemy is going to start pawning all his insecurities. You know how weird it was growing up when your cousins are 20 years older than you? Like, you don't only kick you walking and you're calling people by their first name. And everybody's calling them auntie or uncle. It's weird, you know? And you're like, what? And so at one point, I felt like I didn't belong. You know? And then for me, I grew up, and my mom is full Korean. My dad is Chinese Hawaiian. I don't know what happened, but except for the Kanak side in my voice, everything else is Asian. Small eyes, light skin, you know. I'm like, wow, you know. And so when I go into a party, they're like, oh, who brought the Asian guy, you know? My sister, poor all Hawaiian looks, but Asian personality. Hi, oh, hi, oh, so sorry. Oh, you know? <laughs> Me, I come in, what's up? And they're like, cuz, who's that dumb Korean guy, you know? My sister come in, oh, oh, you ain't coming, man. Oh, you so Hawaiian. Where you went? Ah, when Damien went, I never let go of Kamehameha, you know. But anyways, so a lot of insecurities. So you saying, I am a child of God is powerful. It's so powerful, gang. You got to realize that. Imagine this. Imagine if we became a church, not paralyzed by insecurity, but empowered by who God is. Right? All this insecurity, all this doubt, all this insecurity is not good enough, not smart enough, not skinny enough, not big enough, whatever it is, all these, all the pain you felt could be 20 years ago, could be 15 years ago, all this pain and suffering you felt, imagine if you just washed it away by just proclaiming God's truth. I am made perfect in His image. I am a child of God. And number three, I am forgiven. Now this one, ho. Oh. Okay, by the way, I'm giving you guys all secrets, yeah? The enemy, don't let like you learn all this kind of stuff. Because what happens is, okay, I'm a child of God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm in perfect in image. Oh, yeah. Shoot. You know, it's like when you first find out one girl like you. Oh, yeah. What's up? You know, you just feel confident, right? But see, I'm made perfect in his image. I am a child of God. But the most powerful is I am forgiven. Because when you know you're forgiven, you're not held bound by your past. 
You're not held back by your past. You're propelled forward by the Lord. You know, and it's hard to figure out that, to really own, like appreciate and like embrace that you're forgiven. But you don't know what I did 20 years ago. Oh, that's 20 years ago. Let it go. Oh, but you don't understand. See, for me, like, um, the way I was raised, I was always around uh, grudges, um, unforgiveness. Uh, we would, you know, families got disowned by other family members, all kind, all kind of craziness, you know. Um, and so I was trained to really not forgive. My motto as a, in high school, okay, in high school now, like 14 years old, is what goes around comes around, but I won't come back 10 times stronger. You know, and because I was, you know, raised just, the, but what, what I realized later, it wasn't my family's fault, it's the enemy's fault. Because in Kalihi, you got to be able to fight your way out, run your way out, or talk your way out. Like, you got to, me, I told you I was a fat kid, so I couldn't run, eh, obviously. Unless it was downhill, I can run faster than anybody downhill, you know. Number two, I'm kind of, I, like, I don't like to fight. I'm protective, but I'm a pacifist. Like, I don't like fight. I don't like fight. If God will, I'll call my someone friend, but I don't like fight, right? But see, so what I would do is, I would just, man, I could cut anybody down. I would, man, I could cut you down, I, I, and no holes barred. I would talk about anything. I would talk about your dying sister. I don't care, as long as I cut you down. But see, the enemy made me believe that this was my role is I'm the man. I won't cut you down. But see, he was trying to pervert the way the Lord made me because one of my gifts is actually exhortation or encouragement. Is I love to encourage people. I love to, you know, but see, what his job is, is, you know, I'm going to distort your stuff from when you're young. So that way, when you come old, you're not going to realize God's call on your life. Anybody seen Terminator before? It's exactly that, people. He gonna see, he gonna see, he gonna see, he gonna see you. Okay, when you, when you 35 years old, you can impact the world for Jesus. So when you 13 years old, I'm gonna just mess you up. I'm gonna mess you up when you're young and you're dumb and you don't realize what I'm doing. So that way, when you get to 35, you don't live up to what God has called you to. You live up to what I'm telling you to. But see, God has called us to be his sons and daughters, amen? But we got to understand this one thing, man. You, you got to realize you're forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Oh, but remember what you did, the kind? I'm forgiven. Oh, but uh, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. And guys, you're like, Franco, you kind of crazy or what? I go, no, but this is what I had to get through to get through all my insecurity and doubt and all these lies. And so... This is just where the Lord, that's what I just did. I just started changing all these lies I heard into his truth. Amen? But see, the key, though, is to repent from our sins and follow him. And this can be done by a change of heart and a decision to follow. And I'll close with this. You know, if you haven't said yes to Jesus in your life as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do so right now. You can see a simple prayer, and doing so says what's going on inside and that's I repent of my sins and I follow your ways you know I just believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and if you could please bow your heads and close your eyes with me no worry, no one's looking except for me and I cannot see far because I get small eyes anyway so we're good okay if you haven't said this prayer before and I want to I want to for the first time you want to say, Jesus, you're my Lord. You are the Lord in my life. You're my Savior, and I believe in you. If this is you, please raise your hand for the first time. Two. Okay. Three. All right, put your hands down. And if you're saying, you know what, Franco, I've, I've said this prayer before, but I haven't really living up to it, right? And I really want to make today a different day. And I want to go out of these doors a different person and I want to live as a child of God. I want to live made perfect in His image and believing that I want to live forgiven. 
And if that's you and you want to rededicate your life, please raise your hand. Amen. Put your hands down. And if you could just repeat this prayer after me. We're all going to say it. So everybody in this room, no matter who you are, if you raise your hand or not. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for today. Thank you for dying on the cross. Today I make a, I make a decision to make you Lord of my life. I repent of my sins and start a new journey from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, let's give everybody a hand. Cheese! We got to celebrate.